This is my Tandy Model 100 portable computer. I love this device. It's one of my absolute favorite pieces of older electronics. Even though the 8085 processor inside the Model 100 isn't as powerful as today's computers, it's still a useful machine. In fact, there's a sizable enthusiast community with many people who use their Model 100 on a daily basis. And what's more, folks in this community have hacked away on this device to make it even more relevant for modern use cases. And that's what I wanna talk about today. Now the operating system that runs on the Model 100 is built into a ROM chip. And believe it or not, this OS was built by none other than Microsoft. That's right. In fact, it's reported that the code running in your Model 100 was written by Bill Gates himself. And this is probably the last bit of code that he wrote before he stopped doing development. Now, the ROM chip contains a simple menu system with five built-in programs. The main program is a flavor of BASIC called Model 100 BASIC. Now, this was similar to other versions of BASIC that Microsoft wrote at the time, but with additional support for some of the features of the Model 100 specifically. But alongside of that, there's a text editor, an address book, a scheduler, and a telecommunications program. But what about modern times? How can you use a Model 100 today? Well, this is where some of the great community work comes into the picture. There's been a number of innovations to do things like adding external SD card storage or emulating third-party ROM chips. But one hack really takes the cake, in my opinion. A couple people in the Model 100 community have ported over the CPM operating system. Now, if you're not familiar with it, CPM is an older operating system that was created back in the 1970s by a company called Digital Research. If you've ever used it, you would have noticed that it's a little similar to another popular disk operating system of the 80s and 90s called MS-DOS. In fact, the guy that Microsoft purchased 86DOS from, which is what later became MS-DOS, used CPM as one of his main inspirations for how 86DOS should behave. So if you're comfortable with MS-DOS, then you're gonna be right at home with CPM. Now, running CPM on the Model 100 would definitely make it a more usable machine. In addition to some of the games that CPM has, there's also some business software. Now, you still have to deal with the limitation of the Model 100's eight line by 40 column display, but I'm gonna talk about how we can get around that in a future video. So how exactly do we get CPM to run on the Model 100? Well, like I mentioned earlier, there is an active community of enthusiasts that are working on exactly these types of projects. And one of those projects is an expansion chip called the Rec CPM. Now, CPM can run on a system with as little as 20 kilobytes of memory. It does, however, require that the lower 32K address space is available in RAM. And this poses a problem for the Model 100, because the Model 100 uses a portion of that space for its ROM. So we can't just run CPM on a stock Model 100. We need to make some modifications first. And this is exactly what the Rec CPM chip does. It frees up that lower 32K region so it can be used by the CPM operating system. And along with that, the Rec CPM chip also provides either two or four megabytes of memory that can be used for file storage. Now this is kept on a static RAM chip. So if you lose power to the Rec CPM, it's likely that the contents of memory that you're keeping your files in is gonna be wiped out. So you wanna make sure that you don't remove the Rec CPM from the system for more than a couple minutes at a time. And you wanna make sure that you keep that internal memory battery charged so that the memory has an active signal going to it. Installing the Rec CPM was pretty simple. First, I had to pop open this little compartment underneath the Model 100. And as you can see, there's an option ROM socket and an external bus connector underneath that hatch. The Rec CPM chip itself has two boards that are connected by a short cable. The one with the castellated pins fits into the option ROM socket. 
The other board goes into the 40 pin bus connector. One of the pins is labeled as pin one, so I was careful to make sure that I line that one up with pin one of the socket. Now that the Rex CPM chip is installed, we need to initialize it. And because there's no flash on board this chip, we need to do this process manually ourselves. Now, to do this, there are two high-level steps. The first is we need to get the firmware loaded onto the Rex CPM. After we do that, then we can go through the process of installing the CPM operating system. Now, I think the best option for most people is going to be to use a serial cable. Now this is a 25 pin to nine pin serial cable, and you can use this to plug your Tandy Model 100 into your computer. The 25 pin connector plugs into the RS-232 serial port on the back of the Tandy Model 100. And then the other end of the cable will plug into a nine pin serial port on your PC. Now, if you're like many people, you probably don't have a nine pin serial port on your computer these days, so you can get one of these guys. This is an RS-232 nine pin to USB port converter. And you can plug the serial cable into the nine pin connector on this converter and then plug the other end into your USB port. Okay, now that we have the device connected to the computer, we need to grab some files. Uh, first, we're gonna grab a program called Laticon, and this is gonna be a Tandy portable disk drive emulator that you'll run on your PC, which makes the computer look like a Tandy portable disk drive to the Model 100. We also need to grab the firmware files for the Rex CPM chip. And there's actually a zip file here uh, that we'll want to grab. So we'll download the zip file, which contains the firmware version 2.1. And we'll also need the CPM operating system files and the CPM update file, which is used to install the CPM operating system on the Model 100. And the last thing I'm gonna grab here is a TPDD client. And for that, we're gonna grab the TS-DOS ROM image from this collection of ROMs on the Model 100 wiki. Now I'm gonna create a new folder called Laddie and I'm going to move the files that I just downloaded over to that folder. The reason I'm doing this is when we run the Laticon TPDD server emulator, the files that are in the same folder as the Laticon executable will be presented to the Model 100 as being files that are on the disk that the Model 100 thinks it's communicating with. So I went ahead and copied over Laticon. I also moved over the Rex CPM initialization file uh, as well as the TS-DOS option ROM, and the CPM files as well. Okay, so the next step is to get the firmware loaded onto the Rex CPM chip. Now over to the Model 100 laptop, we need to get the Rex CPM initialization file over to the laptop. And the way I'm gonna do that is by using the built-in text program. When firing up the program, I'm gonna tell it to edit the file rxcini. And then I'm gonna tell the text editor to load the file from the COM port. So we're gonna send the data over the serial connection from the PC and any data that it receives on the COM port, it's going to write to that file. So now the Model 100 laptop is waiting for the data. And before I can go ahead and send it, I first need to make sure I know what COM port the serial cable is actually using. So see here in my device manager that I'm on COM3. Okay, now we're ready to go ahead and send the file over. So I'm gonna do this through a command prompt. Uh, I'm actually gonna use the native DOS copy command to do this. But first we need to set up the COM port with the correct parameters. So for that, we're gonna run the mode command. And you'll notice here that I'm setting the COM port parameters to the same settings that the Model 100 is expecting to receive the data with. And once the COM port settings are configured, we can just run the copy command and specify that we wanna copy the file over COM3.
and that command just takes just a second or two to run. All right, now back over to the Model 100. Uh, going to break out of the file transfer because we've done, we're finished transferring the file. And now you notice I have the RxC any file on the Model 100. We're going to run that by dropping down into basic and run RxC any. And this is going to take just a moment to start up. Now, while that's going, I'm going to jump back over to the PC here and we're going to start up the LaddieCon TPDD server emulator. And I'm running this with uh, the port COM3, so it's going to listen for incoming TPDD connections on COM3. And the 6 means that LaddieCon is going to present the files that are in the 6.2 format as files on the TPDD disk to the Model 100. Jumping back to the Model 100, uh, we see that the initialization program is now continuing. And it's first going to ask if I want to load the RexCPM firmware. So I'm going to say yes to that. And RexCPM does require a directory, so I'm going to tell it to go ahead and initialize that directory as well. And then this initialization step takes just a couple of seconds to run through. So now it's prompting me for the RexCPM firmware file. So I'm going to give it the name of that file, which is going to be copied from the TPDD server that's running on the PC. Okay, we're done copying the Rex CPM firmware file now. So we can go ahead and load up the Rex manager by running the call 63012 command. All right, now you notice in the upper right it says there's no ROM image loaded. So we're going to go into the Rex manager and load up the TSDOS ROM image that we downloaded earlier. Now TSDOS is going to give us a TPDD client that we can use to transfer over the a uh, file that's used to install CPM. And to do this, I'm going to hit the load command from the Rex Manager tool and give it the name of the TSDOS ROM image. And then hit the enter button. And now you notice that it's downloading that ROM file from LaddieCon running on the PC over that serial connection. Okay, the TSDOS ROM file is finished copying. So now we're going to go ahead and hit enter to load up the TSDOS ROM. And now notice that we're running our TSDOS ROM for the Model 100 version 4.00. We'll hit F4 to switch over to the disk view. And now TSDOS is reading the contents of the disk from the PC running the LaddieCon software. We're going to go to the CPM update file here. And we're going to choose to copy that over to RAM by hitting the load command. And then we can switch over to the view of memory on the machine and verify that it's there. Okay, so now we're going to exit TS-DOS, drop back into the Model 100 menu, and hit enter to run the CPM update file. And now it's prompting me for the name of the CPM operating system files. So I'm going to give it CPM210.bk, which is the file I downloaded earlier. And we're going to go ahead and tell it to install CPM. Now, while it's running through this process, it's actually downloading that CPM210.bk file, again, through the TPDD emulator that's running on the PC. Okay, we're all done. So now we have CPM fully installed on the Model 100. Now to run CPM, uh, they've given us a shortcut. We just hit Control C. And now you notice we're in the CPM uh, DOS prompt. And if I hit DIR, you see the content of uh, the local disk. Uh, stat will give us a readout of how much space is available in the drive. You'll notice I have 1.2 megs of space available. And that's because 
Again, remember this is on a two megabyte SRAM chip. Uh, you also notice that the CPM folks gave us a copy of Zork to play. So let's go ahead and fire that up. Now you'll notice here that some of the text is wrapping around the display. And this is a feature that's actually built into the CPM port for the Model 100. You see, it's aware of the 40 column by eight line limitation of the screen. So when the program that you're running spits out too much text, the CPM OS, the port, will display what it can and then wait for you to hit a key before displaying the rest which I thought was a really nice uh, finishing touch to make it more usable. Now, more than just Zork is available for CPM. In fact, CPM has a pretty vast library of applications. And if you get a Rec CPM chip, you're gonna be able to run many of those applications on your Model 100 and really make it a more usable machine. Now, if you want one of these chips yourself, here's the link where you can go place an order. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. I certainly enjoyed making it. And until next time, go make something cool.